I support my local sporting squadron. How about you? <laughs> Welcome to the Scale Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. It's episode 55 of What's on the Bench Weekly. familiar with this show it's where I take you through projects that I'm working on and it's on a weekly sort of schedule it's mostly every week I don't miss these very often uh, and if you enjoy shows about things on benches and learning about stuff hit the like button subscribe if you haven't already and ring that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild okay on to the stuff that's on the bench this first thing is the Revo Point Inspire 3d scanner and while I am not an expert, this thing makes me look a lot better than I actually am at this stuff. Um, you may have seen Josh's video yesterday where he also showed off this Inspire. Uh, and it's a pretty amazing piece of technology. Revo Point has done a few scanners before this one, uh, all with the intention of smaller objects. But this one is actually designed to scan larger objects. Nightmare inducing objects like my head. As you can see, not a complete scan. Uh, I was just messing around with it, trying to get a handle on what it's capable of. And I was able to scan most of my head by myself. Uh, if I was scanning my wife's head, uh, it would have been a lot easier because I could move it around her head a lot easier. Um, moving it around my own head by myself uh, was not very easy. But as you can see, this device is designed to allow you to scan objects in 3D and then use that data for a couple of different purposes. You can use it to 3D print that object that you scanned. You can use it like I've done here, and I'll show you in a moment, but you can use this scanner to scan objects and then create paths and use that data to create 3D printed items around that thing. And uh, it's very handy in that regard. For me, a beginner, the software that comes with this is very intuitive, very easy to use, uh, and pretty foolproof, if I'm honest. It gives you all the data you need to bring that 3D scanned item directly into a slicer, so you can 3D print it from there, uh, or into a 3D program like Fusion 360, which I am still very much a beginner at, but have learned a lot over the years. Uh, it's a fantastic tool, and there are a few things about it that are different from other scanners in the past. It obviously uses more data. There's a lot more sensors on here that allow you to scan more data more quickly in greater accuracy. It works very well on large objects, like I said, on things like my head or maybe a dog. I did want to scan my dog. As soon as I brought this out, he ran away. So that's a huge failure uh, because I wanted to scan Alexander so I could scale him down and print him out and put him in my next scale build. Uh, I think that would be a great application for it. And of course, with something like this, provided the object you're trying to scan stays still, <laughs> will give you all the data you need to create a 3D print. What did I use this for? Well, I ended up scanning the rear of the uh, Element Utron chassis here. Uh, that's the Enduro SE style chassis with the IFS2. And what I scanned was the rear um, chassis rails because I needed to create some new shock mounts because the original shock mounts actually were quite far back and had <laughs> the shocks angled in the wrong direction. I wanted to fix that. so. Uh, I used some, where is it? I used some uh, very classy dry shampoo like Josh recommends, uh, sprayed it over the entirety of the frame rail here, and then scanned the data. I didn't really even have to move the scanner around very much. I just hit the button on the back here, let it scan the data for that, uh, for that uh, frame rail, and uh, ended up with a very usable file. Now, Josh, of course, helped me through a number of steps in Fusion 360 to get the data that I needed. But as you can see from the scan, it does show where all the holes in the frame rails are, and they're pretty darn accurate too. Uh, a few steps later, I was able to design up these shock towers, which I then printed on my Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon. And within about 20 minutes, I had brand new shock towers that worked absolutely perfectly, exactly as I had intended and they fit absolutely perfectly as well. That's where a 3D scanner really comes in handy. 
I'm sure I could have designed these up and figured out some math in order to give me the exact dimensions and the contours of those frame rails so I could make these shock towers. But to be honest with you, two minutes with the scanner and then another few minutes in Fusion 360 and I've got exactly the part I need that I know is going to fit perfectly. I didn't even have to do a test print. I printed one, it printed out perfectly, and then it also fit perfectly. And that's why something like the Revo Point Inspire is so handy in our hobby. I ended up doing something that was going to be far more accurate and something that, to me, is a lot more rewarding uh, using the Inspire 3D scanner. Along with the scanner, you get a very nice long USB-C cable uh, that will plug into the back of the Revo Point and then into your computer. And then you also get a multitude of uh, scanning discs and dots and pads and uh, reference plates and all kinds of things that will help you on your scanning journey. Journey. So if you're interested in one of these, they are running a Kickstarter. I will put links down below where you can find out more information. I absolutely did not think this was going to be for me, but here we are. And now I'm using this. I'm definitely going to be using it again. It's very cool. And I am going to try to get a scan of my dog. <laughs> okay. Uh, now that we've got that all sorted out, let's move on to the next thing. I'm going to the gym. Going to work out so you can tell people so you don't have to admit to them that you play with RC trucks. <laughs> when in reality, you're going to the trail. I love this. These are the new Traxxas uh, bags. These are your pit bag or RC bag. Uh, it's a very versatile carrying case uh, for your RCs. Uh, lots of space. You saw I just pulled a TRX-4 out of here. You could also probably fit a, um, probably a Haas, definitely not an X-Max, uh, but uh, there's lots of storage in here, lots of room for things. Uh, they've got all kinds of little extra bags and such. You can put tools in there if you want. There's Velcro straps. There's the works. These things are loaded up. And a uh, nice solid build material and quality here. Uh, they've even got runners on the bottom of this one. So if uh, you were to uh, perchance drop it, it would just slide across the floor and go drifting with this. Very versatile though. Nice pack and uh, great size for our hobby. I'll be sure to put a link down below if you want to check these out. Uh, in addition to that bag, uh, they also provided the largest backpack I've ever seen in my life. This is a, this is a utility case. Uh, this one has even more pockets and storage for LiPo batteries, tools. Uh, it has a backpack style sling so you can wear this over your shoulders. Uh, but gosh, if this isn't the largest thing I've ever seen. Look at the size of this. I'm a six foot two man. Uh, and this is tremendous. This is huge. Don't give this to a kid for back to school because he'll just take his RC trucks to school. Uh, nice logo emblazoned on the front there and plenty of room in here. Here's a TRX-4 low trail uh, that fits quite nicely in there, as you can see. Um, and dirt on the tires, proof that I run these trucks. Uh, you could also fit a charger in the front pocket here. There is a ton of room for accessories. So if you've got like a two week RC truck adventure, you wanna bring everything you own, they're probably all gonna fit in one of these bags. Very cool. Thank you Traxxas for sending those. I'm gonna use them to store my trucks. <laughs> because I'm running out of room in this room and I need to put them somewhere else. I can trick Rebecca into thinking it's just luggage. Next up from Nordic Crawler RC, uh, we've got a brand new chassis kit. Uh, this is a comp style chassis. And as you may have guessed from the color combination, this is the fire and ice chassis. Uh, now this was designed to work with a number of different components. And as you can see, it is an assemble yourself kit. Uh, of course, no links or axles are provided or any electronics, uh, but as you can see, a very cool looking, and I mean that with all puns intended, uh, carbon fiber, but it's like a icy blue. And if you look at the sort of the profile, it looks a bit like a dragon, doesn't it? Uh, lots of options, as you can see, for shock mounting up front. Same in the rear, absolutely just um, like, a ton of possible options and as you can see it is definitely with 
a class two style comp crawler or cheater truck uh, in tension because these transmission or transfer case mounts are on a pretty significant angle uh, that's only going to be class two or class three legal you would not be able to run this in class one uh, i am pretty excited to put it together uh, it also includes all the standoffs so you can get the spacing correct uh, two chassis rails <laughs> as you would expect uh, and nordic crawl uh, included three different skids for me uh, so i can choose what sort of setup i'm going to go with either an element case axial three gear or uh, one of the more exotic style uh, transfer case setups and do like some sort of forward mounted motor there are also two skids included these are very tiny little skids but as you can see a nice solid design uh, all these parts are 3d printed but they are definitely printed in a very high infill so nice quality parts there and uh lots of nice little touches i'm really excited to see this thing come together and uh hopefully build a nice little uh, cheater truck on it um, maybe even for competition who knows so thanks to nordic crawl for sending that my way okay what else have we got all right finally this week an update on the bugger utb18 chassis as you can see i've started painting this one um it's almost a color match to the original which is right over here uh the only difference of course is that this one's got a bit of weathering so um it's not quite exactly the same color but it's pretty darn close uh the white is definitely matching that's just racing white from tamia the blue is a metallic blue and on this car obviously it's got a gloss coat but uh before that it was a it's a uh, it's actual automotive paint for a toyota <laughs> this is sort of a mishmash of tamia paints uh, that I tried to get it to look the same, and it's pretty close. It's got a little bit of that titanium gold uh, in it, uh, mixed with a uh, light metallic blue. So it's pretty close. It's not exactly the same, but it's going to be close enough for photography, and once I get it weathered, it should match. Um, I'm pretty happy with this so far. I also did some interior work as well. Uh, you can see the man's been painted, and uh, I think he's all wired up. Uh, but I still need a few extension cables to get that all sorted. Then I will glue it to the inside of the body uh, once all the weathering and everything is done here. Um, but yeah, it's coming along. Sh slowly but surely. I have to admit, this has been another one of those crazy weeks. I'm recording what's on the bench at um, midnight. Wednesday night. On to Thursday morning. And uh, yeah... Not proud of that. Uh, certainly wish I was further ahead on some of these projects than I was. But you know what? It's a hobby. And it's supposed to fill hobby time, not work time. And work pays the bills. This is fun. That's what I tell myself anyway. <laughs> One final thing on the bugger chassis. The motor's been detailed and put into place there. Uh, I'm just going to slap this in there just like that. And then that'll be all done looking pretty good back there if i do say so myself uh really excited to get this done though and get it out on the rocks i cannot wait to see how it does because uh if it does half as good as it looks i'm one third of the way there <laughs> lots of great suggestions on numbers um i'm not really sure which one i'm gonna go with yet i was thinking about 420 just because it's funny next to 69 it's like that's the running gag so maybe we'll do that maybe we won't if you've got a late number you would like to try, uh, put a comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking. All right, I think that's gonna do it. Uh, thank you so much for watching for this uh, weekly show, which I am pumping out weekly. Uh, and hopefully um, you'll be sticking around and seeing some more progress next week because it's a lot less busy at work. I may have some time to actually do something, which would be great. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again next week.